small synthetic piece of fabric that's become a potent symbol of the pandemic and an intimate part of our daily lives. We might see fewer surgical masks out in the streets these days, but they've certainly left their marks socially and culturally. Welcome to this week's France in Focus, where we're exploring how almost two years of covering our faces have affected us. For example, how does just catching a glimpse of the eyes change our first impression of a person? How have we learned to interpret nonverbal cues and work out the emotions expressed behind the mask? And what happens when we finally take them off? Our reporters have been looking for answers. At this co-working space, like in many companies, mask wearing is no longer mandatory. As employees part ways with the face covering, they recall some humorous situations. Both of us kind of got our identities back when we took off our masks, because it turns out that we look a lot alike with them on, and suddenly the customers had trouble telling us apart. We're going to show you. And when we laugh, we close our eyes so we look even more alike. It wasn't easy. If the mask helped to protect people, it also changed their interactions, as they had to guess at facial expressions and features. So in fact, we imagine the bottom of the face to go along with what we can see, and it's a surprise when what we imagine doesn't match with reality. There are disappointments and good surprises, that's all. I can't say more, I have to be diplomatic. In fact, a study from Cardiff University shows that people tend to idealize faces. This man's face was presented uncovered, hidden, or masked. He's considered the most attractive when he's wearing a surgical mask. Researchers say the reason is related to the type of face covering. Long equated with illness or death, surgical masks are now associated with the medical profession, and that's become soothing and reassuring. As for being surprised when the mask comes off, that can be explained. The brain will assimilate all the faces we have seen since we were born and reconstruct the lower parts of the face. The results were a bit disturbing because 87% of those questioned said they were surprised when the mask came off because it wasn't what they imagined. Another consequence of removing the mask, people's brains can take a break. Because during the pandemic, the brain had to work harder to reconstruct facial features and to decipher the expressions and intentions of the person speaking. Homo sapiens brains are made so that when we walk down the street or in public spaces, the main question that pops up but stays in the background is deciding whether or not I'm in danger. Will the person attack or let me pass? And that's a fundamental point. The more people there are, the more the question arises and the more information your brain has to process, and it has to work harder when people are wearing masks. A less tired brain and more fluid communication, making it easier to interpret more than a dozen types of smiles and some of our 10,000 micro-expressions. Indeed, after many months of just seeing their classmates' eyes, French teenagers were able to return to school without their masks in mid-March. Now, for some, at this sensitive age, the facial covering had become a way to express their individuality. For others, it was a reassuring screen to hide behind. Alison Sargent went to find out more. In this music class at the Collège Saint-Exupéry in Paris, students are singing and clapping along to Queen, even if some of their mouths are covered up. Weeks after France's schools ended their mask mandate, about a third of these 12 and 13-year-olds are still wearing them in today's class. Sometimes I, I just put a mask on in the morning because, well, I don't know, I'm sort of used to it. And I'm tired and my face doesn't look that good. It's prettier that way. It adds a bit of style. We keep it because it looks good of our clothes. An accessory, some said, is also practical for chewing gum in class and hiding from teachers. They're less convenient in classes like this one where students practice dance routines. Still, several of these 13-year-old girls keep their masks strapped around their chins and admit they've found them hard to let go of. 
I just feel more comfortable with the mask. I don't know why. Of course, taking off our masks was, well, not an ordeal. That's too strong a word. But of course, we were worried about what others would think and all that. On days when I don't want to take it off, when I don't feel good about my face, I keep it. But when I feel good about my face, I take it off. This ongoing attachment to masks isn't a surprise to psychologist Arlette Hobo, who says adolescence is a time when the outside gaze takes on particular importance. Not only for children, not only for adolescents, but also for adults, the outside gaze can represent desire and seduction, but it can also become oppressive. So for some teens, especially the younger ones, for whom psychological transparency is an issue because they think we can see what's going on in their heads, the mask becomes a sort of veil protecting their interiority. When you think about it this way, young teens choosing to wear masks isn't so different from wearing hoodies or experimenting with makeup. Their adolescence just happened to coincide with a pandemic, essentially giving them two crises to navigate. For some more detail and analysis, I'm joined by anthropologist David Le Breton. David, thanks so much for joining us. And as we said, now the mask is no longer mandatory. You can take it off uh, together in this room. Now, you're a sociologist at the University of Strasbourg. You've written extensively about the role that the human face plays in our society. So I wanted to ask you first, what does the face convey about our identity, our personality? Obviously, we recognize people by their faces. That's how we are named. We are identified with an age, a sex, a level of attractiveness. The face is also the point of mutual recognition. It's through each other's faces that we perceive the impact of our words. It's how we know whether our words are welcomed with goodwill or whether, on the contrary, the other person seems rather critical or worried or annoyed. So the face is also an essential element in conversations to know how to appropriately behave with one another. And uh, smiling, uh, a person's smile is something that we saw rarely uh, during the time that we were wearing masks. How important is a smile in day-to-day -day interaction? I think smiling is essential when meeting someone. It's a fundamental part of recognizing someone. Through our smile, we let the other person know we are happy to see them again. Now, the mask might uh, hide certain things, but it can reveal others. For example, our relationship with authority, our consideration for other people. Do you think the mask is even an indicator of politics? When it comes to daily life, it has a political side to it, in the sense of our interactions with each other. It's true that masks provide anonymity. We no longer really know who we are dealing with, and in this sense it allows for some to interact in a way that would be impossible in other circumstances. For example, in France in the first months after the lockdown was lifted, many women using public transport complained about various forms of aggression, harassment, inappropriate comments, all the more common as these men knew they were not going to be recognized. With a bare face, there are things you'd never allow yourself. You know there's a French say, and it goes this way, if I did that, I could never look myself in the face again. And following the pandemic, uh, the fact that you cover your face, a facial protection, has a kind of positive association now, given that many medical professionals wear them. Do you think it's uh, something that shows trustworthiness, responsibility? Now I think the mask is associated more with a sense of responsibility towards other people. It's true that at first it was absolutely a major anthropological break, living without a face. We wondered how that was going to be possible. Sometimes we came across Asian tourists who wore them in the airports or on the streets of our big cities. But it remained mostly anecdotal. Then suddenly billions of people started wearing masks and it started to be positive 
negatively associated with fighting the pandemic, fighting the disease. In the coming months, when the pandemic is behind us, I think it will probably be more common to wear a mask when you have the flu, for example. I believe we have now become accustomed to the mask and that it will be positively associated with protecting others. And wearing the mask has affected different sectors of society in different ways. For example, some studies show that very young children have had linguistic difficulties because of people wearing the mask around them. Why is that? I think it's the youngest generation that's been most affected by the masks. The children who are two, three, four and five years old who had to wear a mask while their teachers and childcare workers also had to wear a mask. These children have been deprived of certain essential elements of interaction. A child who asks you a question looks at you. He's not only paying attention to your voice, but also to your face. He seeks out your face most of the time. So in the upcoming years, it is the children who risk bearing the consequences of wearing face masks. Unless the parents have always been loving and attentive, and if the parents explain to the children why they had to wear the mask for a while, and if they also explain that this was not normal, but that society was in danger, and it was necessary to protect ourselves against the illness. David Reporton, thank you very much for joining us today. That's all for this week's France in Focus. Thanks for watching. We'll be back next week here on France 24.